YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. So, I'm trying to make this video quick and dirty. I want to tell you guys that I have an opinion when it comes to this, um, I guess this little problem in the uh, psychedelic world where you have people with latent mental disorders take trips and have those mental disorders emerge where otherwise they would have not happened in their day-to-day -day lives. Now, I want to argue that these people are actually better off getting their mental disorders emerging at that time, which is usually adolescence, late, uh, early adulthood, time to experiment with substances and whatnot. That's better for them to have it come out then than later on in life, where they can risk the achievements they've made or the uh, people, the social networks they have. The reason why I feel this way is because from what I just said, the risk is much less and you have more time to work with your newfound life, basically, the disorder that was always there but hasn't come out yet. Now remember, what makes the disorder come out to begin with is nothing to do with the actual psychedelic chemical, but instead has to do with traumatic experience that comes along with an unsuper unsupervised and uneducated trip, when, when the person takes the trip unrealizing or unaware of its potential and not really in alignment with any sort of work to be done with it because these chemicals aren't really to mess around with. Um, they may make you laugh a lot and they may make you see things as really hilarious or funny or weird, but they have the potential to do a lot of work in your mind and it becomes, it can become as traumatic as any other traumatic thing in life, such as war or loss of life or injury or sickness. So what I'm saying is it's better that these people have these problems come out earlier in life because of a, a drug experience than later on in life that they'll risk losing their whole family, seeing the family fly apart, seeing their job uh, that they worked hard for. Uh, and, 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 and lose that and have people let down, people that were counting on them to do certain things, right? So, I just want to also say that when it comes to the literature, obviously there is no causative link between psychedelics and schizophrenia. Uh, just to, a quick note, people have been taking drugs like this for generations in places like Brazil and, and, and New Mexico where we have Native American tribes take peyote, and in Brazil they take ayahuasca, which is DMT. And they do this on a weekly to semi-weekly basis, and th these populations have less mental health problems than populations that don't do these kinds of things. So I think that's to be, to be said, that these psychedelics were used properly in supervised settings or with people who are very well acquainted with them or you know, acclimated to them, that the, the risk of, of negative experiences are, is almost no, right? It's only when you do it with ignorance, with malintent, or with um, lack of intent that you run into problems such as these. So just to quickly sum up, people with latent mental disorders that have them emerge because of certain bad psychedelic experiences they had, I feel it's better for them to have it happen then than later on in life when they could risk much more, uh, they can risk much more uh, uh, substantial and uh, significant things such as their jobs or their families and whatnot, their livelihoods, their social networks. So, I mean, uh, it's, um, you know, remember, a bad trip can always be the most positive thing in the long run. Um, remember what the Rolling Stones said, you may not always get what you want, but you get what you need. So I've been here for four minutes, and uh, before 20, we'll cut that off. Thanks, guys, for listening.